Hey, everyone, and welcome to Weekend Worship here at Sunny Hills Church. Uh, Super glad that you stopped in. I've been noticing something about our viewership of our weekend sermons is that even though the sermons are generally about 20 minutes long, uh, most folks check out after about 10 minutes. So this morning I'm going to try a little uh, more brevity and hope that you'll stick through to the end because the main point of today's sermon I think is pretty cool. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the plot to kill Jesus. We're talking about the cross this year at Sunny Hills. And prior to Easter, we're kind of building up the stories that created uh, the events of Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday. But before I uh, talk about that, let me just give a shout out of thanks to everyone. You were so kind uh, as we, my family and I went to Florida to uh, conduct the memorial service for my dad. Uh, there I am with Cole and Woody and Kim. And that's a picture of dad on the screen. I loved him and still love him so much. And certainly I'm going to miss him. But one great thing uh, about uh, this whole experience has been the outreach of love and the support that I've gotten from my church family. So thank you all for that. Well, let's dive right in. Uh, the, the plot against Jesus really began in earnest after the resurrection of Lazarus from the dead. So that happened in John chapter 11, 1 through 44. Uh, Mary and Martha had a brother named Lazarus that loved him so, but he died. And they had um, encouraged Jesus to come and heal him. They had trust and faith that he would. Uh, but Jesus tarried, and uh, he was late, and Lazarus, Lazarus died. Uh, but Jesus uh, went to the gravesite, uh, had the, the helpers roll away the stone, uh, perhaps foreshadowing what would happen to him after his own death. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. And would you know, he just come hopping out of that grave and uh, unwrapped the grave clothes. And um, it was a great miracle. Everyone rejoiced. Lazarus, who was dead, was now alive. Well, that will certainly get your attention. And it got the attention of the people who were there. So people really respond differently to God's grace. God uh, is so kind and good to people, and sometimes they respond positively. Sometimes they embrace God's grace, and then sometimes they just they push God away or even actively, in this case, oppose God. Many of the people who were with Mary believed in Jesus when they saw this happen. Of course, if you were there, a man comes, a dead man comes walking out of the tomb at the call of Jesus. I would believe Jesus because of that. But in verse 46, some went to the Pharisees. I don't know whether they were spies or plants or whatever, but they did not embrace Jesus. Their loyalties lay elsewhere. And they told the Pharisees, the religious leaders of that day, what Jesus, what Jesus had done. When you witness to people, obviously some people will respond uh, with, with appreciation. They'll place their faith in Jesus. They'll thank you for your word. And other people will think you're some religious lunatic. Get away. I don't want that craziness that you're preaching. And it's always been that way and always will. God's spirit is at work in people's lives. And hopefully, if you're listening today and God's Spirit is speaking to you, you'll receive the word with grace and enjoy rather than push it away as these did. Then the leading priests and Pharisees called the high council together. These are the Sanhedrin, the ruling council of the 70. And there was political intrigue inside of that body. Some uh, believed in the resurrection of the dead. Some did not believe in the resurrection of the dead. And this dead man being raised from death, Lazarus walking out of the tomb, put half the group op opposed to the other half. See, I told you the resurrection could happen. And others said, no, it's just a trick. That Jesus fooled everybody. So there's division. And they asked each other, this man certainly performs many miraculous signs. If we allow him to go on like this, soon everyone will believe in him. Then the Roman army will come and destroy both our temple 
and our nation. You know, this has been a pretty rough go in the United States the last couple of weeks, uh, dating back to January 6th and even before that, back to the election before that. Uh, religion and politics, faith and politics, there's always been a tension. Always has, always will. And uh, what we see in this verse is that the religious leaders were worried about the political implications of Jesus's miracle working power. Had they been wise, they would have stepped aside and allowed Jesus to continue to work unhindered. But there was a hand at work. God's hand was in fact using the political drama of the day to further his, his kingdom. And God chooses to use whomever he chooses, however he chooses, to push the kingdom of God forward. You know, there's uh, great religious leaders from the past. Billy Graham, beloved uh, leader, he was able to kind of carefully navigate that gap between faith and politics. Uh, great preachers from years gone by. Billy Sunday, famous preacher of a bygone era, pulpit pounding, fire breathing. Uh, God really used him to do some miraculous work during the great revivals. You had religious leaders throughout the Middle Ages, John, uh, um, John Calvin, Martin Luther, and others. Uh, but God sometimes uses scoundrels to push forward the kingdom of God. Let's look at this. Caiaphas, who you would expect, because he was the high priest at the time, you would expect that he would be sensitive to God's leading, that he would want to go the direction Jesus wanted to go. But quite the opposite was true. Caiaphas, who was the high priest at the time, said, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't, don't, you, you don't realize that it's better for you that one man should die for the people than for the whole nation to be destroyed. He's referring here to Jesus. And then the scriptures say something interesting. This is a, a editorial comment uh, by John. Uh, the Spirit's leading him to kind of peek under, under the surface of what Caiaphas is saying. He says, he did not say this on his own. As high priest at that time, he was led to prophesy that Jesus would die for the entire nation. Caiaphas intended this as a political statement. Caiaphas intended this to squash Jesus, that we're just going to let him be the sacrificial lamb uh, so that the whole nation isn't taking, taken down. And what uh, John says is, oh, isn't that interesting how he said that? Because, in fact, Jesus was the sacrificial lamb, not to take the nation down, but to bring people to God. Verse 52, and not only for that, nation, but to bring together and unite all the children of God scattered all around the world. So much was at work in these events that the people who were living through them saved Jesus. His disciples didn't fully understand. The religious leaders didn't fully understand. Caiaphas, even though he heard himself saying this, didn't fully understand the import of what he was saying. God uses whomever he chooses. Maybe God will use you, whether or not you're faithful or, or unfaithful. God can use whomever he chooses to move his kingdom forward. And sometimes God's plan just doesn't make sense. So from that time on, the Jewish leaders began to plot Jesus's death. And then down in verse 57, Meanwhile, the leading priests and the Pharisees had publicly ordered that anyone seeing Jesus must report it immediately so he could come under arrest, so he could arrest him. And so uh, the plot thickens. And from this time forward, it was difficult for Jesus uh, to do much public ministry. We'll see that on the next slide. The reason this just doesn't make any sense, you know, I lost my dad uh, last week to an illness. Um, he was in hospice care. I was fortunate to be able to, to be there, to, to be in the room holding his hand as he went from this world to the next. And uh, as much as I miss my dad, uh, surely he's better off 
with Jesus. Surely life in heaven is better than it is here on earth. But imagine uh, they hold the body at hospice for about two or three hours so that the family can call. Is, you know, is there anyone that would like to pay their final respects? Uh, and no one in the family really wanted to do that. So, of course, the, uh, the body is taken to uh, be dealt with. Can you imagine the funeral director calling a couple days later? Alan, you're, you're not going to believe this. This preacher came by. Uh, he knew that you were hurting. He, he said he, he'd wished he'd been there earlier to heal your dad, but, um, but he, touched, he touched your dad said, Cal, sit up. And he did. And he jumped off the table and he's on his way over to see you right now. Well, what kind of crazy, wonderfully beautiful, crazy phone call that would be. And suppose that uh, uh, my preacher friend from Winter Haven who was conducting the service and helping, uh, suppose after the, the news came, that uh, he and his other preacher buddies in town said, we can't have miracle workers around here. Hey, let's try to get him arrested and killed. Well, that wouldn't make sense. I mean, you want God to perform miracles. And yet in this passage, uh, verses 53 and 57, so from that time on, the Jewish leaders began to plot Jesus's death and uh, then to arrest him. And there are times when God performs miracles. We don't understand it. Uh, maybe we don't even agree with it. But God's kingdom is moving forward. The cross is moving forward. These events uh, from the raising of Lazarus from the dead to the reaction of the, the crowd to the tattletaling of some to the Sanhedrin, their decision now to plot against Jesus, all of these are events that are difficult to understand, and yet God is using them to move his plan forward. So if you're stuck, if you're confused, you don't know why certain things are happening to you. I don't, I don't know either, but don't despair that God has forgotten you just because things don't make sense. There are many times that God acts and it doesn't make any sense at all, but his, his plan is moving forward. And then God continues to work around human road, human made roadblocks. So as a result, this is what happens in verse 54. Jesus stopped his public ministry among the people and left Jerusalem. I mean, he was a people person. And because of this death sentence, that's now been passed, uh, not officially, but again, it's unofficial snooping and sniping by the religious leaders. He's a marked man, and now he has to kind of work in the shadows. So he goes to a place near the wilderness, to the edge of town, to a village, Ephraim, and he stayed there with his disciples. He's still going to work. He's still going to minister. The kingdom is going to move forward because human beings cannot stop the progress of God. Sometimes uh, we find ourselves stuck and confused and worried roadblocks come, we lose our job, we have health troubles, you name it. I mean, 2020 was a terrible year. And we thought, oh, wow, this is great. 2021 is coming. And then 2021 starts off worse than 2020. And we think, where has God gone? God gone. Well, maybe he's in the village of Ephraim, still doing his work, still moving forward. So my friends, don't be discouraged. Here's the main point for today. The cross is God's unstoppable plan to rescue humanity. It's unstoppable. God will not be thwarted. God will, God will not be hindered. Jesus is going to come through. He always has, and he always will. Let's look at the closing prayer for today. I suggest we finish praying like this. I'll just read the prayer once, and then... Uh, we can bow our heads. Dear God, we, we know that you are on the march, moving your kingdom forward through life's confusing moments. You were doing it after the resurrection of Lazarus, the resurrection of Jesus, after political and social unrest, after everything and anything, God, 
the cross is victorious. That's our prayer this morning. It's a declaration of faith, isn't it? Thank you. Let's uh, pray to wrap up the service today. Dear God, we know that you are on the march. We know it. Moving your kingdom forward through life's confusing moments. You were doing it after the resurrection of Lazarus. You were doing it after the resurrection of Jesus. After political and social unrest. After everything and anything, God, we declare that the cross is victorious. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, God. Amen. Hey, once again, thank you for staying to the end this week. I appreciate so much you listening, watching, and hope you have a great day. Uh, God bless you.